Today's topic is gonna to be the HSA, or Health Savings Account. It's what I personally use since I have a high deductible, high premium insurance plan. And the HSA can be used in one of two ways. It can be used as a retirement savings account, which will be the first thing I'll talk about. But if you have medical expenses and you have a high deductible, high premium plan, the HSA is also a great way to reduce the cost of your medical expenses. And so first thing for me, the HSA is something that I can get $3,600 into it. I am no longer single it's because I'm married. I am able to get onto my wife's plan or my wife can get onto mine, uh, but we've both elected to just stay with our respective plans. For me, I'm not sure how much I would actually truly be paying because it gets a little murky as I am an owner in my private practice. So I'm not really sure what my monthly premiums are, but it really wasn't a factor before I got married. And so now that I am married, I'm just continuing with my insurance plan. For my wife, she has a great insurance plan through her work at a nonprofit, and so we both elected to keep our own. But for me, I'm using the HSA because I have a high deductible, high premium plan that essentially protects me against an emergency. So for me, I think mine caps out at around 3,500 before I meet that deductible and then everything else is covered. And so for me personally, I am 33, I am young, I am healthy, I have no chronic medical conditions, and so I don't go to the doctors all that often. I have a uh, one visit to see a PCP that's technically covered under my HSA, but everything else, like if I went to the urgent care, had to go to the emergency room, I'm gonna have to pay it out of pocket. And I'd be paying it out of pocket until about 3,500, at which point my insurance would then kick in and cover everything else. And so for me, it's perfect. I'm just there in case of a real bad kind of medical emergency that I want protection against. My monthly premiums are a lot lower than if I had gone with one of our other options for health insurance. This might not be the best insurance plan for you. And so some of the things you need to consider when picking out an insurance plan is how much medical expenses do you typically have in a year? If you do have a lot, then there's two school of thought. You might want one that's going to have essentially a lower deductible and is going to be paying a higher percentage of your medical expenses. So it's not all shifted to you up front. Alternatively though, if you have a lot of medical expenses and you're always getting to that kind of top part of maxing out, maybe a high deductible, high premium plan might not be such a bad idea so that you can just go ahead, plan on paying that, save on the monthly fees, and then use the HSA to kind of reduce it. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But for me personally, uh, because I have a lot of cash on hand, I'm able to just use my HSA as a retirement savings account. So the way this works is it's funded with pre-tax money. So money is taken out of my uh, paycheck and generally I just max it out in my first two pay periods for the month of January. You can do this however you want, but I essentially in January just fully fund it for the year. For me, since I'm staying on the plan by myself and not with my wife, it's just 3,600 and that's for 2021. If I were doing a family plan, I think it's 7,200. If you're over a certain age, I think there's an extra uh, kind of catch up, uh, but you'll have to go ahead and read about that on your own. But for me personally, I do about the max, which is 3,600 for this year, and then I go ahead and invest it. My actual investing within this HSA is fairly simple. I just picked VT, it has a low expense ratio, it gives me coverage of all the US stock market, and it's great. Um, the VT, or actually no, the VT is not VTI. So the VT is gonna be just my larger companies and a little bit of international exposure. Uh, but the VT is great for me. Uh, some of the other ones that were there had higher expense ratios and I really wasn't interested in that. And so this one's really simple. Everything just goes into that fund over and over again each year and it's able to grow and compound. So the money there grows over time and it is growing tax free. I don't have to worry about any dividends. It just gets reinvested. Uh, but what I do with this account is I just let it grow. I want to leave it uninterrupted until I'm 60, 70, because in my later point in life, I'm going to have medical expenses. And so that money is going to come in handy at some point in time, rather than drawing down from my kind of savings account or individual brokerage account for medical fees, I can just go ahead and pay out of my HSA. And so for right now, one of the things I'm doing is I did have a kind of uh, heart scare at one point in time where I had palpitations and I ended up going to see a cardiologist. So I had to see a cardiologist, I had to wear a Holter monitor, I had an EKG, all of that cost money. And so I ended up paying that all out of pocket and then I kept those receipts and I have not reimbursed myself. Later on in time, 
when I get a lot of time and compounding, I could just reimburse myself from these uh, costs from, I don't know if it was 2019 or 2020, but I just save those digitally and I'll be able to just reimburse myself and it'll get withdrawn from the HSA tax-free. And so that's the beauty of the HSA. We're all gonna have medical expenses, but if you're able to pay them out of pocket yourself right now, you can just reimburse yourself later. And so when 60 comes along and you're just retiring, you're no longer working, you can just pay yourself back for all the medical expenses that you'd paid for those five, 10, 20, however many years. And that kind of adds up with time. And that's one way you can use the HSA as a retirement savings hack. And that's what I plan on doing. The other reason why it's helpful is just this money has time to grow and everyone's gonna end up having to use it at some point in time. End of care, um, end of life care ends up costing a lot of money. And so you can bank on having to spend it at some point in time. And then I think there's ways to even passing it on to your surviving spouse. So it is worthwhile. If you have access to a high deductible, high premium plan and you're not using an HSA, that would be a mistake. But I'm not saying that you should selectively pick a high deductible, high premium plan just so you can get access to an HSA. You need to first make sure the insurance plan works for your medical needs and the coverage that you need, especially if it's involving your family. The last thing you want is to have a high deductible, high premium plan for an entire family, have this huge deductible that you would have to cover before your insurance kicks in, and then have life happen to you and then set you back. The second thing I wanna talk about though is the other way of using an HSA. If you know you're gonna bank on having a certain amount of medical bills every year consistently due to chronic medical issues, and you have the high deductible, high premium plan with an HSA, you get to take your money pre-tax, put it into this account, and then you get it distributed to yourself to pay off those medical expenses. So depending on what income tax bracket you are, it's essentially a discount or savings for your medical expense. So let's say your income tax bracket was 25%, and let's say you had the max, which is 3,600. You have put in 3,600 of your pre-tax money, meaning you didn't have to pay any taxes on that, so you saved that 25%. And let's say you had medical bills of that 3,600. You went ahead and paid $3,600 from your HSA account, and you saved that 25%. That's one other way the HSA is a great hack to kind of save you money. If you already have a high deductible, high premium plan, and you have an HSA that you're fully utilizing. And so there's two different ways of using it, or at least that's the way I've discovered. If you found any other wrinkles or folds, I'd love to hear about it in the comments, but that's my HSA by and large. It's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward, uh, but it's not for everyone. So again, it's worth restating. You have to find the right insurance plan that works for your needs or your family's needs. Do not just do a high deductible, high premium plan because you want an HSA. That could end up leading to kind of some mistakes that end up costing you quite a bit. So be careful, think about things first. But if you have any comments or questions, feel free to drop it there. Thanks for listening, it's always a pleasure.